going on guys and welcome to today's video and today we are going to be dialing in our tire pressure on our tires now you might be going what are you talking about look at the door sticker it'll tell you what recommended tire pressure um, for your vehicle put the air in the tires and go down the road now on most 99.9% .9 of vehicles that is a very good um, go by the if you haven't seen <laughs> on the driver's door jam on all vehicles originally there would have been a sticker that has the recommended tire pressure and normally that is what I go off of um, any vehicle I work on that I'm um, doing maintenance on I'm opening the door verifying what pressure it calls for and putting that pressure in the tires and that works most of the time always except for when we start talking about um, aftermarket or even in this case factory off-road wheels and tires um, this Jeep was optioned with the extreme 35 pack so we've got a 35 inch tall tire um, on I believe an 8 inch wide wheel with the extreme recon package now that is all fine and dandy but we've got a 12 and a half inch wide tire so we are pinching um, a 12 and a half inch wide tire onto an 8 inch wide wheel and when you run a higher pressure that will cause that tire to basically curve or not lay flat on the ground and you would assume the manufacturer would have corrected or reduced the tire pressure recommendation to correct that um, tire wear basically but they have not for whatever reason these things even with the larger wheel and tire package call for 37 psi and for all you guys out there running around with that factory 37 psi if you actually take a look at your tires most of that tire or at least the edges of that tire are not going to be touching the ground now this is a lot less of a issue um, with normal Wranglers I guess without the big 35 inch wheel and tire package but like most Wranglers if you've got aftermarket wheels and tires big 35s 37s whatever you're going to want to also do this so what we're going to be um, doing here is showing you guys the tire chalk test basically how to chalk your tires and figure out what pressure we need to be running and then we're going to need to correct the tire pressure light on this thing um, on any modern vehicle if you are running under recommended pressure you're more than likely going to have a tire pressure light dinging at you every single time you start the vehicle um, and if you guys didn't already kind of understand the whole point in reducing the tire pressure of these big wide off-road wheels and tires is to get even tire wear if the whole tire is not even touching the ground we're going to be wearing out the center of the tread before these sides ever even touch the ground and that's what the issue is with running 37 plus psi with these wide tires the edges aren't even on the ground okay guys so now down here at the tire um, to do a chalk test what you're going to want to do is have a nice flat piece of road you know your neighborhood street somewhere where you can um, find a nice big area to do this because you're going to just need to drive straight you know mark your tires drive straight see how the wear is reduce pressure and do this kind of a few times so a big parking lot somewhere that you're not going to be annoying people as you are doing this but what we're going to want to do is take a piece of chalk and mark all the way across the tire here so we've got a nice um, even chalk line going all the way across the tire now this tire already is aired down to where I need it to be so we're not going to go out and drag the thing but in theory we have marked our tire we're going to go out and drive the vehicle you know in that nice flat parking lot and see where our tire um, is actually touching the ground so guys in this case we're going to assume or simulate that we had our factory rated 37 psi in these tires we did our nice chalk mark and went out and drove straight on our parking lot for a little while until we um, have hopefully worn the chalk away now how these would have looked with the 37 psi we would have driven on the ground and basically ended up with the center tread that is actually touching the ground wearing all of our chalk away but our big huge lugs here on the side weren't ever even touching the ground because that tire was so domed up if that makes sense so in this case what we would want to do is 
you know, have done this on all of our tires, um, or at least two tires, we now know that our 37 PSI is too much. We're then going to um, have a tire pressure gauge with us, go around to all four tires and lower our pressure. Now, um, I don't know what to tell you on how much to lower at a time. You know, at least drop a few PSI, maybe two, three PSI at a time because going one PSI at a time, it's gonna take you a long time to actually see some results. So two or three PSI, drop the pressure down, and again, take your chalk, go out and mark your tire all the way across, and again, take that same drive in that parking lot or down the street. Now, hopefully after dropping some pressure, we've not just worn the center away, but maybe we've started to wear, um, we've, we've flattened that tire on the ground a little bit more and went, hey, look at that, we've got half of our side lug um, now touching the ground. And again, um, it, it's gonna be the point where you're running too little pressure or still too much pressure, but what we're basically going for is this chalk to be very evenly worn off all the way across the tire. So again, we've dropped two or three PSI. We can come back to our tire and drop another two or three PSI. And again, we're gonna go back, chalk our tire, and drive the same distance there in the parking lot. Um, and in this case, we're gonna hope to have worn our chalk very evenly all the way off across the tire. Now, if you've still got a teeny, teeny bit left on the side and you're already down to 30 PSI or 20, you know, at some point you can kind of be happy with the fact that you have gotten almost all of the tire on the ground, or again, continue to lower pressure until you get where you need to be. On these factory 35 inch tall tires with the factory wheels, the factory wanted 37 PSI. What I ended up finding was 30 PSI cold, so you know, not with the tires hot after driving down the highway for an hour. You're gonna want the tires to be cool as you're doing this test because as a tire gets hot, the pressure increases. So again, do this test after the vehicle's been sitting overnight. So you start with a nice cool tire to start this process. But what I ended up getting really nice, even where all the way across the tire was 30 PSI cold. Um, so again, quite a bit difference, quite a large difference from the 37 PSI that this thing has on the door jam. Um, so I am going to hopefully get a lot more even better wear out of my factory tires because I'm actually sitting the whole tire on the ground versus only having this center section on the ground. Now, 30 PSI here in the front has gotten really, really nice and even. On the back of the vehicle that has a little bit less weight, it does not have the big heavy engine. The back, even at 30 PSI, still has a little bit of chalk, um, basically showing you know here and here with the rear at 30. Now I could choose to go down more in the rear, but I'm going to be happy with, again, that little bit of edge showing on the rear because when I rotate my tires, it's going to end up evening itself out once those rear tires are on the front, the front are on the rear. So I'm not too concerned with the rear having that little bit of edge showing. If you carry a bunch of gear in your vehicle or whatever, your results are gonna kind of vary. So that's, in a nutshell, what the tire chalk test is. It's kind of an easy way to view and see where your tire wear is going to be. Um, Jeeps or any vehicle with, you know, all terrains or mud terrains, I see them come into the shop all too often with worn, choppy, just absolutely destroyed tires from overinflation or lack of rotation. So it's just really important to maintain these large, um, expensive tires to get the best wear and life out of them. Now, tire rotations, I know we're not really talking about maintenance here, but um, I am doing my tire rotations every 5,000 miles with my 5,000 mile oil changes. So um, that's, that's another thing I see, you know, all of these vehicles have such long oil change intervals, every 10,000 mile oil change intervals, which I personally don't do myself, I do them every five. Um, 
a lot of your mud terrains and all terrains are not going to be happy waiting 10,000 miles to do tire rotation. So keep that in mind so you don't destroy your expensive tire. So now that we've got our pressure um, dialed in, you know, we've got our chop worn away, we've got it where we need to be, we're going to fire our Jeep up to drive, um, you know, the next day down the highway and we're going to have a tire pressure light dinging on the dash. So up next, we're now going to want to, um, at least in my case, I don't want the tire pressure light dinging every single time I start the vehicle up. It also pulls up the tire pressure screen on startup, so you've got to click the button if you don't want that screen showing all the time. So now we are going to program um, our vehicle to recognize a lower recommended tire pressure, so it just is all happy. It doesn't have a light on. Um, now on a JL, we are going to need a couple of items here for programming. Now there, there is a few devices you can use. There is a taser, um, there is J-Scan. Like I said, there is multiple different um, you know, tools you can use to program uh, tire pressure uh, values, your tire height, all kinds of different things. What we're going to be using um, and showing here today is JSCAN. JSCAN is a um, basically just an app you download on your personal phone and then you'll need a couple of items to connect your phone to your vehicle system so you can go in there and change configuration. Um, first thing here we have a uh, OBD2 um, Bluetooth reader, a code reader more or less. This is a uh, VCAR, uh, or excuse me, this is a VGate iCar Pro. Um, this is one of the recommended uh, Bluetooth code readers that JSCAN you know, suggests on their website that works well at least with their software. So that's why I picked this thing up. Um, now on JL specifically, you will need a uh, security gateway bypass cable. These have a security gateway module that's basically trying to prevent people from messing with configuration and that's unfortunately exactly what we need to do. So this is another cable, you can find them all over the place on eBay, Amazon. This is a 12 plus eight cable is what they call it. Um, a Chrysler 12 plus 8. Basically, it has our 16-pin data link connector on one end that our um, OBD2 code reader is going to plug into, and then on the other end, it has our two connectors that we're going to unplug our security gateway module, plug into this, then plug into our code reader, and then we can Bluetooth connect to our phone and use the app to mess with this thing. Now when we're done um, playing with our configuration, we can unplug, remove all this mess, plug the vehicle back in uh, to the security gateway module and everything is happy. Um, now you aren't tuning anything, you aren't really voiding any warranties, you're not in really worry of your dealer being angry with you because you're not tuning the vehicle. All we're doing is changing config configuration values for whether that be tire size, tire pressure. Now, yes, with the Taser and with JSCAN, you can go in and mess with a whole bunch of different configuration things, whether that be LED light settings, um, gear ratio, yada, yada, yada. You can go in there and really um, fiddle with things. So all we're going to be doing today is just using it for tire pressure. So let's jump under the dash, let's get this thing plugged in, and uh, let's fix our tire pressure light now on this. So jumping in here under the dash on our JL. Now, um, you do not need to pull this panel, but it kind of makes it nice to be able to look through. And all this panel is held on with are a few clips. So you can just pull this thing and get this thing removed and out of the way. There's a few clips on each side and that panel will pull straight out of the way. All right, guys, so I have got you kind of wedged up here under the dash and you can see those two connectors right there that are going into that black plastic box. That is our security gateway module. Um, those are the two connectors we need to unplug to be able to plug into our security gateway bypass cable to get this thing programmed.
Now guys, here are the two um, connectors unplugged and they have a small plastic tab that you're going to need to push with your finger to release that lock tab and then they will unplug out of the security gateway. Um, I like to kind of get my hand back here. And again, this is impossible to see, but um, where I've got my hand is right here underneath the dash. And you can get your hands on those two connectors relatively easily and get them unplugged and out of the way. Now with those unplugged, we are going to need to plug them into their corresponding um, connectors here on our bypass cable. And they're gonna plug in just like they unplugged until we push in, until they click. Now we've got a, another data link connector that this is going to plug into so we're going to be, so we can connect to our JSCAN app. Now guys, last but not least, we are going to need to turn the vehicle to the on position. We do not want the engine running, but we want the um, vehicle in the on position. So without pressing the brake pedal, we are going to hit the push button start two times to get into the run position. Now guys, real quick here, you can see we've got our tire pressure screen pulled up, showing that we've got our tire pressure light on and we are, uh, Tires are low and we need to inflate to 37 PSI. So that is what we are trying to correct here with the programming. With everything plugged in, we are going to go to our JSCAN um, app here. Now we are going to select our vehicle. And in this case, it is a Jeep Wrangler JL. It is preparing to connect to the vehicle. Um, it asks which uh, OBD2 adapter that you're going to use. Now you need to have already um, connected via Bluetooth with that um, OBD2 adapter. And in this case, it is the Android V-Link. Tells me the vehicle should be off, but the key in the on position. Now it comes up and tells me that this VIN number does not have a license. With JSCAN, you're going to need to pay basically to use their software per vehicle, if that makes sense. Um, the app is free, but they need to make their money somehow. So we are going to go in and view the license, and here are our options. We've got a single VIN, three VIN, five VIN. These are, if you are doing many, many vehicles, you could buy um, you know, multiple licenses per usage. Now, in this case, I'm just going to select a single one VIN license for $24.99. Um, it lets me know that, hey, I've already pur purchased a single VIN license before because I've used JSCAN on my mom's Jeep. So we're gonna hit yes to purchase this. And it comes up and asks me how I want to pay. We are going to pay here. Google Pay is currently stealing our money and giving it to JSCAN. And just like that, I have lost $24.99 and JSCAN has become a little bit more profitable. We are going to continue and it now lets us know the current license, or it, it asks us if we want to assign that VIN license to our connected vehicle. We're going to say yes. And I believe we can now go into our app. Um, we can go over to adaptation. And this is where you can go in and change what we are basically doing, but real quick, let's look through all the cool things, you know, um, quick diagnostic, you can go in and read trouble codes, um, different OBD2 tests, you can check to see how they are um, doing. Um, we also have live data, you can go in and I believe select different um, live data things to look at. Now you can go into all of the different computer modules on the vehicle and look at different things. Body control module, you could go in and look at different um, trouble codes, configuration. But 
All we're doing or wanting to do today is correct our tire pressure. So we are going to go over to adaptation. We are going to scroll down and again, you can see all of the darn things you can do with JSCAN, but we are going to scroll down to tire pressure settings. Now, what we are wanting to correct is our max load inflation, which is right here. Now you do need to call, uh, change it for the front and rear. So I'm going to go into max load tire pressure front and it's currently gonna tell me 37 um, PSI because that is the factory PSI. Now from our drop down menu, I am going to select my new found um, tire pressure, which is going to be 30 PSI. We're going to hit go. It is going to now um, change the configuration in our vehicle. Changes applied successfully. So now our current pressure is 30 PSI for our front. We need to now go back and go to max load inflation pressure rear. It should, like it shows, 37. We're going to scroll down to 30 PSI, hit go. It's gonna do its thing. And just in a few seconds, it has applied those changes. So we now have corrected or changed our tire pressure settings. Again, there is all kinds of ridiculous stuff you can go in here and change. We could go in, change wheel and tire size. If you put larger tires on the thing, you can go in and fix your tire size to correct your speedometer. If you've changed your gear ratios, your transfer case type, just all kinds of things you can go in here and change and mess with with JSCAN. Now jumping back in here, we can already see our screen is showing our new pressure of inflate to 30 PSI. Now our pressure light and our red screen is still showing. That is because we've just actively changed this. We still haven't even cycled the key. We've done nothing. So guys, we are going to now turn the key back off on the vehicle and start unplugging and removing all of this mess here under the dash. We're going to unplug our OBD2 code reader. We're going to unplug our bypass cable and then we are going to need to plug our two um, connectors back into that security gateway module that is kind of a bear there up under the dash. And again, that's why it is very helpful to have this panel removed so you can kind of get your head up there and see what you're plugging in. Okay, so now after getting everything unplugged and the vehicle fired back up, as you can see, we've got three pressures showing good and we still have one red. I believe we're going to at least need to make a lap here around the block to see if that is going to update for us. All right, so in just a few feet of driving here in the neighborhood, um, it reconfigured basically or re-read all of our tire pressure sensors. And how cool is that? <laughs> we do not have a tire pressure light on now with our corrected pressure. Now real quick, I did want to mention your tire pressure is going to potentially vary. You know, here are my 37 inch mud terrain tires. Um, these are on factory 392 wheels that are non-extreme recons. These are only a seven and a half inch wheel with a 12 and a half inch wide tire. So we're even more pinched than those factory tires on my Wrangler. So these I've had to even dial down even more on pressure. Um, what I kind of found was decent-ish was 28 PSI and I could probably even lower it a little bit more to get even more of the edge of the tread on the road. So keep in mind that your numbers are going to drastically change or vary depending on your tire width. The the wheel width, the, you know, multiple different things, the, how the tread design is, is going to greatly um, depict on that tire pressure. So it's going to take a little bit of playing with, throw some chalk on there, go out to a parking lot, drive around and figure out, you know, what pressure you need. 
So guys, hopefully you found this interesting or potentially learned something you didn't already on either it being our chalk test and getting our tire pressures down um, enough to get the whole darn tread touching the ground for good even tire wear and that will help you get the most life out of your expensive off-road tires or us using J-Scan there in the vehicle to dial in our new pressure to our vehicle so we don't have that tire pressure light dinging at us every single time we start the vehicle because I've had the tire pressure light dinging on this since day one for 1700 miles now. Um, that was one of the things I did day one was figure out what pressure I needed, lower it down, and know that I wanted to make a video messing with J-Scan and all of that for you guys. So we're dialed in on tire pressure on our tires. We've got J-Scan with our configuration set. So now the vehicle is happy and our tires are happy and hopefully our wallets are a little bit happier with a little bit longer tire life. So guys, I will throw links down in the description to the bypass cable and the um, OBD2, uh, you know, Bluetooth code reader connector thing um, that I've got. But keep in mind, you can go on Amazon, you can go on eBay and find a whole bunch of different ones. Um, I just got ones that I thought would for sure work. JSCAN has a list on their website of known compatible uh, Bluetooth um, OBD2 readers that for, for sure work with their system. That's why I went ahead and got one of those. So, like I said, down in the description, I'll have both of those um, listed. Uh, so if you want to fix your darn tire pressure light, and like I said, JSCAN does so much more. Clearing codes, reading codes, I mean, you can really, really mess your configuration up if you're going in there messing with things that you shouldn't be. So be a little bit mindful when you are playing with things so you don't screw it up and have to come see me at the dealership and me fix it for you. Um, <laughs> but that is one thing that we cannot do at the dealership is changing tire pressure or um, set pressures for that system. So. I'm no better than you guys, even being a cool Mopar technician, I've still got to buy J-Scan, I've still got to buy all the cables to correct my tire pressure there on the dash. That is nothing your dealer can do, unfortunately. We have very limited um, things that we can change and configure there at the dealership. So, get yourself some J-Scan or a taser, which I personally have not messed with, so that might be a different ball game on how you do that. But get out there in your garage and fix your tire pressure and hopefully fix the light on your dash. And guys, as always, thanks for coming out into the garage with me. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys next time.